Well, this was more of a teaser title than anything else. <laughs> no, the, my intention is very straightforward. Uh, you, have, you guys have had a very uh, s you know, a sequence of technical talks. So what I wanted to do was to have something completely different. So essentially, the question I wanted to ask is, uh, and that's, that, that's why I thought you know, I'll go the, I'll be the last one, is to have a, a, a kind of a, a panel or a forum or whatever to see, uh, ask, uh, to answer a few questions. So the first question I have is, and I don't have it up on the thing, I should have put it there, is why do you use Git? What has been your motivation so far? It's for you to answer. Why, why do you use it? Or, yeah, you said you track on track, your what else? What else? Have, in other words, okay, you, you, uh, CJ, you have, you have a lot of stuff that you use Git for, right? So if I put you as 100%, you know, as, as, as where do the rest of you fit in that scale? Where do you think you fit? How many would say 50% you know, of the things you do, not programming alone, is using Git? So programming in documents. Documents. OK, what else? Anything else you think you would have loved to use, but you cannot use it? Uh, Images? Yeah, Game and save files. Config files. Config files. <laughs> so, so do you think that, so the, so that, that's one of the things, right? I, I've spoken to a lot of people, and config files seems to be one of those things that will be very, very useful to, to keep track of. I mean, we, we all try to do that, right? or your dot, dot files and all that. Is there something that you think, uh, yeah? Dropbox. Dropbox. Did you just drop your files into a Git directory and it automatically sync? There's a there's a there's two for that. Oh, is that right? Oh, okay, Sparkle I share. Sparkle share. Yeah. It behaves like a Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox. You drop your files in and into a dot Git directory. And when you share it, I mean, so it goes out to? It, it um, depends on where you set your remote as. Mm. Uh, oh, okay. So, so can you have multiple? You can have as many as you want, provided that uh, they all have individual remotes. And your remotes, whichever hosting or service you're using, uh, allows you to, to share that size of data. So if you have a habit of dropping images, uh, uh, large AI file files, it will not make very much sense because you run out of space very quickly. Because each change, and because Git doesn't forget, uh, it, in that sense, it doesn't behave the same way as a Dropbox. Mm. It does keep track of every single change. So, so, you know, one of the things I've loved to uh, see is uh, Git being a, a standard way into tools like, you know, uh, office tools, like LibreOffice or something like that. Because I think that's where there's a lot more value that we can get out of Git. So what do you think we can do with that? But I, I, that's one area, which, because in, the reason I put for Git for my mom is, is for those of them who are not doing any of these things. They are using their spreadsheets. They're using their word processors. How do we get them to be able to do version control? Because I see them sending emails uh, with attachments and this version, and then they put a name of the file, dash mine, or dash, you know, my boss, or, you know, that, that it has to be a better, we know there's a better way to do it. So what can we do to put that in there? So I, I like the idea of the dot .git directory. I mean, maybe that's something which, I, I don't know whether that's, that's a good one. What else do you think we can do? Do you think this could be a, a project that we, you know, collectively try to think of? Instead of sending around a zip file, you can send. You could send a packaged archive, which is a key. But the tooling you'd need around it, mm. so that people could extract it mm. and use it, it's all there. But it just needs to. Yeah, be it has to be put together. It has so to be integrated. Yeah. So, so, so that's my question. So that, that's one of the things I would love to see happen, because then we have a whole new group of people coming on board and actually using it, not knowing that they're using it. Yes. Right. I mean, that's really. It has to be very transparent. But all the benefits they get, they get, uh, they get, but not the necessarily the you know the confusion or the pain, as it were. So I'd, I'd say one of the 
barriers to this is mm. the fact that even mainstream Git users, or you know, advanced Git users, are mostly using a centralized store. They're not really distributed. It's where you share a document, mm. uh, where you know the boss needs to see it. You see it. everyone's yeah. editing it. It's possible to merge all those changes, but I think the orchestration is still kind of tricky. So um, do you think that's something that we can try and build? It's a suggestion. It's, it's, it's what I'm putting out there. I think if, if you have a repo that's a SQL document, mm -hmm. it's totally doable, yeah. Mm. But, but it's, it's a SQL document. But there's, a, there's, document. there's a real difficulty in trying to make sure that that would happen. But um, if you combined <coughs> kind of DHT kind of uh, mm. hash, you know, distributed hash tables and mm. blockchain kind of idea, plus um, oh, that'd be direct, interesting. directed graph storage like Git, you can have these kind of things. But ultimately, you end up with a thing like a magnet leak, basically. But it's so like a torrent. It's also, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's basically it's like a torrent. It's a torrent, but it's a changing torrent, right? So a torrent yeah, is a static resource. We're talking about a dynamic resource that, that, that you know you have. Basically, you need a front-end header key mm -hmm. plus the change key. Mm -hmm. um, it could work. But do you but think? I mean, the, the you've got, you got to you got to socialize it. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. So you, if if we as a this 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 meetup group, you know, starts experimenting and trying something like this, simple enough, easily packaged up, delivered via plugins or whatever, as the equivalent may be. Um, into any of those tools, or you start with a simple, simple set of tools. I mean, I think an office product is probably the best way to start. So just to get them socialized, get them to start using it, and see how it goes. Because then I think the the the, the value of Git itself it becomes so much more useful, and a lot more people begin to, but they may not fully understand it, yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> but they benefit from it. The understanding may not be there, right? So that's, that's my first question. So what are the kind of things that you could possibly be doing? The second question I had was, um, okay, you guys, I, I'm, I'm, I'm making assumptions here. Uh, you are all upstream contributors in whatever you're doing. Am I correct to assume that? Yeah. Okay, so upstream, in other words, your organization has got no issues in making that happen. So do you have projects that you work on internal to your organization that are not upstream at all? Or is everything that you do all upstream? That's my question. That was my second question. Um, can you elaborate? Yeah, so the reason I'm asking that is I'm trying to find what kind of uh, mental conflicts do you have when you have to split your mind between what is really upstream and what is sort of internal, even though you may be using the same tools. Because I find that that's like having to keep track of different things in different places mentally not because in a, in a, in an in a open public environment if you mix stuff you make a mistake that's okay i mean you can always uh, fix it but what if you took what is meant to be internal and you put outside accidentally so so you know so you have to have a firewall in your mind to yeah, keep track upstream, you mean, uh, user facing or? well it doesn't matter i mean any upstream project like public or yeah public yeah, when I say upstream, I mean public, yeah, yeah. not internal. You want to pre-push up for that? So... <laughs> mm. No, it could, be a, it could be something that you may already do automatically for, you, for yourself. I, found, I find it very difficult to keep track of that. Um, uh, so, I mean, the, the classic case is credentials. Right? I'm not pushing credentials to, mm. to a repo that you should. Um, uh, also private branches. So, did you have any horror stories about that kind of stuff? I'm sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yes, yes. I'm sure. Yes. Plenty. <laughs> um, so, in the company I work for, we have a GitHub Enterprise. So okay. So it's internal, and no one can access it from outside. Uh, there has been cases where a developer accidentally pushed to a public GitHub. Uh, it's still very rare, though. and there is an active team that uh, actively actively uh, scan. Public GitHub, Bitbucket, and GitLab. Oh, seriously? All these repos, yes. Um, <laughs> wow. So it's it's a gigantic project uh, involving thousands of servers, but there's, there's just one thing that they do. Oh, that's. <laughs>
that's a lot of oh, that's a lot of. Uh, the, I don't mm. know what's the name of the software. Something that starts with black and something else. I think black has something. Um, black duck. It sounds familiar. Yeah. That's probably. It. Anyway, it, what what it does is it, it doesn't just find git hashes. Mm. Uh, it also finds snippets of code. So sometimes people do take an entire fresh repo and make a brand new commit out of it, and that gets flagged as well. So even if you put it on Bitbucket and you put it in a private repo? Well, obviously, if it's a, if it's a private repo... Uh, so it's only, only, only that those that are public. public. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <clears throat> I, I guess that's one of the, this is one of those horror stories that not really mentioned or talked much about, right? Uh, I mean, how real is it, and how how prevalent is it as a as a problem? Because it's it's actually to me it's it's man, keeping your presence of mind to exactly what you're doing at the point in time, right? Uh, unless you say, okay, I only do public upstream projects in the morning, and so you have some kind of temporal, you know, uh, <laughs> segregation of stuff that you do. Oh, anything in the afternoon is always internal or something like that. If you're going to mix and match, yeah, yeah. then it really depends on the developer and how uh, how careful they are. Generally, if I have a situation where it's a very a very project that I push both to internal mm -hmm. as well as external GitHub, mm -hmm. I would usually prefer to put them as separate repos, as in mm -hmm. separate working directories. Yeah. On your own system, that's essentially. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that would be like the best practice, right? Push, yeah, that's the best practice. So when you do a git push, you don't accidentally push to wherever. Yeah. So do you, do you use pre-push uh, hooks? Sorry? Pre-push hooks. Uh, you do for, you mean uh, for linting and... Well, for linting, but no, I mean, you'd use a pre-commit pre hook for linting. But uh, pre-push would be, uh, you want to protect certain branches. So, mm -hmm. okay, some people, no master pushes, you've got to... Mm -hmm push uh, to an upstream. Yeah, but so if you have that, uh, it's fine if you're the only one using it, but usually you have to manage a team uh, of people. And yes, so usually you, you have a pre-receive hook on the server side. Yeah, server if, if you've got server control, so if, you're, if you're on GitHub, you don't have that. Yeah, they have control. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could do all kinds of scanning on a, on a pre-push, mm. uh, depending on, you know, but to, well, you, you either trade off the diligence every second of the day, or you have a team of people working on making sure that certain patterns are never pushed, certain branches are never pushed, and certain practices always adhered to. Right. But there's always there's an overhead no matter how, how you slice it. Except after Friday, yes, right? Don't have beer. General, um, <laughs> that's, that's a quick fix. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, uh, if you don't think about it, how do you even know you can do it or not? Right? So this, the, the, the largest problem is just people were not aware that, that they could be doing this. It's kind of like people tweeting really stupid things to the rest of the world and losing their job on Monday, you know. Um, the biggest problems online always happen because people are just unaware of the dangers. So it's you know. It's an so do you think there is an opportunity to education, uh, educate and teach, or you know that kind of uh, I don't want to call it best practice, but behavior uh, considerations to make sure that you don't don't do that. That's why we have the meetup. <laughs> That's why this is your therapy session, right? So this is uh, uh, get up anonymous, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's good. So okay, so we do have. I mean, so a couple of op options here for me. I mean, the the question of uh, temporal separation is probably one way to do it. I think that does make sense, right? Pair programming. Pair programming. Yeah, pair programming. I think it's 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 probably yeah. Challenge the bank stuff. <laughs> I would yeah. like to add as yeah. well. Um, generally, the the projects that are meant to be public, they are. They are usually, usually most people only have one remote, which is uh, whatever origin they are, and they usually tend to be uh, public or internal. Mm -hmm. uh, and these days, in terms of package management, uh, we depend a lot on package management to help us with pretty much everything. Uh, 
Um, so that is one of the common practice. So for uh, no application, uh, no application especially is most well known for it. You mm -hmm. deploy everything through node packages, and there's a public registry you depend on to to download. Unless you get removed by somebody upstream. Unless. You can, unless <laughs> <laughs> They are pissed off on a Friday night, right? <laughs> like, like the last pet incident. Yeah. Um, the, the, the point is that uh, don't depend on, on Git for deploying software. You depend on which have, uh, dedicated package managers to handle it for you. With, with Ubuntu, you have uh, Debian packaging, and with Red Hat, you have uh, YAM. DNF, right? So DNF. Yeah. Do not. Whatever that stands for. <laughs> so what, what about the other, there's the other thing where, I mean, like, with all these ideas of containers and stuff like that, so where do you think that would be? How do you think that would, because the idea behind containers and the layers that you put inside is, you know, it's like having Git-like uh, feature set or, I mean, or features, but it behaves like you add your different layers on top of it. So do you think that's something that uh, could help in, you switch to a different container for that purpose and it's probably just you know locked down to only to go to a particular place and nothing else so you don't make a mistake letting the system anticipate that issue rather than best practices I mean if it's the same command line you just oh. well, container is just another layer to make things more complicated for developers <laughs> <laughs> you think so? Uh, well, well, I, I, it solves some problem yeah. but it also introduces a whole stack of different yeah, sure, issues yeah it does, it does. Yeah. It ends up indirecting education. So you either get it or you shouldn't be allowed on that system. It goes back to the same <laughs> question with uh, should you re rebase or should you merge? Yeah. It's no, no, no. We're, we're not starting there yet. <laughs> we're, not, we're not starting that discussion, but at the end of the day. We're just referring to just one point to At the end of the day, whether you are going to encourage your, your team to perform rebase or merge, uh, nothing beats actually educating them what the two actions actually do and, and how they are different and let them, give them the option to choose when they want to do a rebase and when they want to do a merge. Mm. Yeah, I mean you can have so certain lines, but you should allow certain levels of freedom for people to do things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also have very hard rules about certain other things. So, you know, please don't push all of our private keys <laughs> into uh, your gists. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a secret gist. No, no, it's not. <laughs> Okay, um, so uh, out of curiosity, how many of you work on open source projects exclusively? <laughs> Re really as exclusive, in other words, there's nothing that you create, even in your organization, that is private repos. Everything is public. Don't think many companies can have that privilege. Well, some can, mm -hmm. but we have. <laughs> <laughs> we have that privilege, everything is in public. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, in this audience here, how many of you? I assume no, none. Well, the company I work for, we encourage open source contribution. Yeah. If you, if you, uh, how is that encouraged? Just to curious. How how is it encouraged? What is the, what is what is said to make it encouraged? Perks, uh, fame, some publicity. You get a free T-shirt. Well, if you can print, you can print T-shirts and distribute them for your open source project. <laughs> okay, uh, it's okay. covered by. Company. So that's better than we won't stop you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which, is so not, which is quite common. So, mm -hmm. so my question here is, and this is where, uh, you know what I should do? Uh, do I have it in here? Let me just quickly check. Um, it's actually a slide that I want to show. I forgot to put that in this deck. Uh, hang on, let me just get that. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's the wrong one. It's the wrong one. Come on, come on. Okay. 
Um, let me show you what we have. Oops, the wrong one. Okay, this is something that we have uh, within Red Hat, and um, this is a it's a document about code of business conducts and ethics. And in this document, it's about three or four page document. It's available online. You can have a look at it if you are interested in reading it. Um, we have to sign off on this every year uh, as an employee and when you join us for the first time. I put this paragraph out here because this is the basis for everything that we do. So it says essentially participation in open source project, whether maintained by the company or another commercial or non-commercial entity or organization does not constitute a conflict of interest even when such participant makes a determination in the interest of the project that, it, uh, that is adverse to the company's interest. So, in English, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 absolutely no issue. <laughs> absolutely, no. In, so essentially, in English, there's a project has got two. Uh, you are at a decision tree at some point to make, uh, you know, go uh, via A or B. A is the right thing for the project. B is so so for the project, and you are a member of the project team. You happen to be a hatter as well, and. Uh, it turns out that A is actually negative impact on Red Hat, but B is kind of neutral to Red Hat. So what should you vote for? This says, vote for A. Make the project succeed. Let Red Hat figure out what to do. Not against you, but let's figure out what to do to manage this, because the, 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 the argument and the understanding is we want the project to succeed because the project is a weaker thing than a company. Technically, a company is a little bit stronger than a project because projects come and go. Projects can die. Projects have issues. Right. I really don't interpret it that way. No, that's what it is. Right. That's what it is. That's the reason I'm still here. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, I won't be here. But, <laughs> but surely legal can dice this any way they want, no, any time they like. If that is the case, there'd be a lot of people who right. say sayonara. Right. You're not interested in this. This is fundamental to what we do. Okay. Because this gives me the freedom to do what I need to do upstream. Okay. okay. And this is, this is something, yep. and every year, at, by the end of the calendar year, we have to uh, online click, 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 yes, yes, that you've read this document. So the only thing I read in this document is whether the paragraph is still there. So in the last, <laughs> in the last 14 years I've been here, it has always been there. It's been clarified and you know, made shorter, but the idea is still the same. So to me, this is a very fundamental. So this is the question. In your employment contract or your code of ethics or whatever that you may have signed up to, assuming you read them, was a clause like that in it? Because this determines how you can contribute upstream. Because you don't have to look back on your shoulder and say, can I do this? Can I do this? Just do it first. Make it happen. And let the, let the business figure out what to do. Not because you did it, but because that's what the business has to figure out. Right. Okay. So this is something which I would like you to think about. Uh, so let me go back to what I wanted to show in the first one. Oops, sorry. So the only pitch I have is uh, for Red Hat. Like uh, my my colleague came here earlier and. So jobs.redhead.com is where you are. If you're interested in anything at all, please uh, look at that. Um, I'll send an email to jobs at redhead.com. Um, the challenge we have, and I'm, you know, I, I can tell you this here, we don't have 100% type of engineering type of jobs in the Singapore office. But that does not mean there aren't any available. Where they are, it, you, if you are in Singapore, you, it will be remote. So you will be a remotee to a project team or engineering team or quality assurance or whatever the, the team that you think you want to be part of. So I think that's great. I mean, in other words, you don't have to be in the office to get anything done. You come to the office when work stops, right? It's wherever you are, do whatever you need to do. So think about it if you're interested in it. Um, 
And I guess the last one is just this. I'm sure you've seen this. <coughs> quick, quick question. Yeah. Um, Singapore is the only uh, office in the region? Or no, we, no. Uh, Singapore, okay, okay, Red Hat is organized in this part of the world. Uh, we have six regions. Uh, Singapore happens to be the Asia Pacific headquarters, okay. also ASEAN headquarters, and the Singapore office, plus all the overheads, HR, legal, blah, 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 in the Singapore office. In ASEAN, we have it in Malaysia, in Thailand, in Indonesia, actual offices. That's within the last two years. We never had them for all this while. So it's always there. And engineering happens out of Pune, Bangalore, uh, Beijing. Uh, Beijing, we have two offices for engineering and, uh, and uh, Brisbane in Asia Pacific. So there's always opportunities, in, you know, you name it. So I would encourage if you're keen on looking at anything, exploring, please have a look at jobs.redhead.com. And if you find something, if you think that's interesting, there's a code for it, whatever the, 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 the job ID is, send me the link. Because then I can make a referral for you if you're interested. Okay. So with that, this is the last slide I have. So if you, yeah, I kind of like this one because I've seen this in many offices on the front door. <laughs> so <laughs> so not, the, not, the, not the back door, but the front door. It says, you know, if there's a case of fire, get commit, get push, and leave building. Do not go on social media. That was supposed to be in there somewhere, but... <laughs> All right. So, with that, thank you very much. If you have any questions, comments, or anything that you want to discuss. I like the first part, I like, you know, uh, to, to see what we can create. I would love to see something like that happen. For mom, okay? Whatever your mom is referred, you know, you, you make out to be. The uh, git commit and the git push need to have dash dash no verify. <laughs> so, file a file... File a PR process and put a post. <laughs> and yeah, that's, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. But that would be too long for, for the guy to put. And by the time he goes to the back of the door, that's you know, so it's like. <laughs> yeah. So I think it would be good if we can create some kind of a tool to get one project. So I don't know what it is that we can do. I don't know how you want to drive this. I think it would be interesting to, to experiment and try uh, build something because otherwise, moms won't get into the picture. And it'd be kind of nice to have them in the picture as well so that we talk the same language. More or less. <laughs> well, within within inverted commas, right? All right. Thank you very much, guys, and thank you for coming to Red Hat. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>